Hi. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Michelle Martinez talking about hashtags today. I feel very p privileged to be here. Maybe you could say I feel hashtag blessed to be here. They are everywhere. People are using them to mark their wedding occasions, creating them for road trips. They use them as uh, identifiers. They use them as descriptors. Sometimes they let you know when they're annoyed. But uh, I found that there are other uses for hashtags. So today I want to talk about um, the improbable connections, the four greatest human needs, uh, learning communities, and radical openness. Improbable connections. Um, in his TED Talk uh, in 2012, John Maida uh, talks about a time where he sat in a sandbox in London talking to random strangers who came uh, and sat there. And he said it made him feel like the president. He was uh, chatting with people, solving problems, and learning creative ways to be a leader, really. And what he noticed was that it created these improbable connections, connections that wouldn't normally be made except for that situation. And I realized that hashtags often lead us to improbable connections. And one of them for me was hashtag literary swag. Now, I defended a dissertation earlier this year. Um, I guess earlier, uh, it's 2016 now, right? So last year already. Um, a year ago this time, I was a mess. I was staring into a computer. I was completely isolated from my friends and family. I actually lost friends over the fact that I had no time for anybody. Uh, it was a very arduous process that l lasted around seven years for me. So at the end of it, I found myself last summer glued to the couch, unable to get out of my pajamas, I had the blues, and I felt very alone. And the last thing I really wanted to do was look at my computer. But I did look at my phone, and I looked at it a lot. And so I found, through an improbable connection, uh, hashtag literary swag. Now, what this is, is a game. It's a game uh, that looks a little bit like this. You take a picture of the outfit you're wearing and the book that you're reading. Now, the kind of pictures, they really started by just top-down uh, selfies with, a pic with uh, the book. And then they started to change as the competition went on. This competition was started by a young man named Yadon Israel. He is an MFA grad student out of uh, New York City. And he created this competition the year before because he thought it would be interesting to uh, see how people not only matched their outfits with their books, but to get people to pick up books. He was a little bit um, upset with the fact that everybody was using social media, but using it uh, to, to disconnect themselves from the book. And books is where most of us begin. So he started this competition, and I started to play. Here's another picture of you, Don. Uh, with a picture, with a book that I sent him, actually, Gloria Anzaldúa's uh, La Frontera. So the deal with the game is that in the morning of the, during the gameplay, to announce that you're playing the game, you post a picture, hashtag literary swag, with your outfit of the day. Then that says you're playing that day. Then you go around into your community and you snap pictures of people reading books. The idea is to capture that moment where somebody's into the book. Um, often I would make my children read and take their picture. So for me, it became a way to take portraits of my kids and get them to read. It also got me out of the house. So in the morning, I would snap a picture of my clothes, and then in the afternoons, I would take my kids around, and we would read, or I would go to bookstores and libraries. Sometimes I'd ask permission. Sometimes I would snap a picture of a person without their face. So the idea with the competition is how many of these pictures that you accumulate in a day. Well, Yadon noticed that some of us lived in smaller towns. Some of us lived in New York City and had access to um, enormous bookstores and people on subways who would read books. But other communities, and Phoenix in the summer, not everybody was out. So he decided to create new categories. Literary swag pick of the day, which this one won. This is my son. You might recognize the big red dinosaur from the uh, Phoenix Art Museum. But he also would do outfit of the day. And for me, that was a harder part. It's another uh, winning picture <laughs> um, of my son reading my old uh, 
childcraft encyclopedias. For me, though, the books and people reading and getting my kids to read and making their portrait created some creativity for me. I like that. I like taking pictures. But getting dressed is something that I've always had a hard relationship with. Fashion and I never really got along. Whether it was the fact that clothes didn't fit me or I didn't have a budget um, or sometimes I felt excluded from fashion. And so, and because I was, I had the post PhD blues, I did not feel like getting dressed. So the beginning of Literary Swag, this is the very first picture for Literary Swag that I posted. Hashtag pajamas are my uniform. <laughs> so because of, um, you know, my modest wardrobe and my uh, sometime, on again, off again relationship with fashion, I decided to get a little more creative with my photographs. I would make small artistic films, so I realized I could get creative with this. Since I wasn't necessarily confident about the clothing, I could get creative with how I staged the clothing, and I started making these little films. Well, my little um, art films made on Instagram uh, started winning hashtag outfit of the day. So um, I started accumulating more points for my portraits and my hashtags, and it gave me uh, some confidence. So this was the final, my final um, picture. Uh, I, w I had won some outfits because doing this, getting out of bed every day, going out into my community, reading books, sharing books through this hashtag, um, and conversations that would start through these books made me realize that this, the community behind Literary Swag helped me get my confidence back. So I came in third overall, and as my prize, Yadon picked a book for me. He picked hit one of his favorites, James Baldwin, The Devil Finds Work. And so I, in turn, sent him one of my favorites. And this is a picture he posted, uh, Gloria Anzaldúa's La Frontera. So this was a book that was important to my identity formation, but also to my voice as a scholar. Uh, and sharing that with him, someone who grew up in New York City, as opposed to myself, who has lived in many places around the U.S., but I'm born in Arizona and I'm raising my family in Arizona. Uh, for us to switch books was a good way for us to get to know each other and to really expand the way we see the world. So when I started looking at hashtags, I decided to look up the most common used ones. And when I found out that fashion and friendship were the two most used hashtags, it made me think of literary swag and the friendships that were formed and the fashion that uh, how fashion can be used to build confidence. You don't have to be a slave to fashion. But at the same time, I didn't have to be excluded from it. And another thing about uh, literary swag that for people who normally felt excluded from the canon of literature or excluded from fashion, this was a way to claim, reclaim that space or to find a way in it. Which brings me to the fourth, four greatest human needs. Most of them we know, right? Food, water, shelter. Some of them we take for granted. Um, and acceptance is one that's a little harder to determine when you don't have it. If you don't have water, you can die. If you don't have food, you will die. If you don't have shelter, it might take a little longer. But again, it's a life or death thing. But acceptance is something that's a little bit harder to tell how it's hurting someone. That's why I have it fading in and out. Because acceptance, sometimes a little bit of acceptance helps. But acceptance is some, something that uh, we look to community for or family. Okay, so food. Hashtag farmer's market. It's a good way to find it. Water. Hashtag water for Flint. Right? We can mobilize community to create these human needs. Shelter. If you remember uh, in November in the atrocities in Paris, this hashtag went around helping people find shelter. So hashtags are out there helping us meet the four greatest human needs. And literary swag really helped me with acceptance. But it goes further than that. Hashtags have also helped create change, helped create movements. Think of Black Lives Matter or hashtag Oscar So White. It's a, cre it's a starting point for a conversation to make deep social change. So how do we do this in learning communities? 
In his TED Talk, John Green, the very famous and popular young adult author, um, he did a TED Talk that revolved around going online and participating in learning communities. What he was talking about was making and viewing videos in YouTube. And he himself, and I believe his brother, both make these um, videos to teach and learn. His have to, has to do mostly with history. So I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about my experiences with, um, with literary swag, and it made me think of when I was, uh, the first time I ever stepped foot in the classroom as a teaching assistant. My uh, job was to get students to put down the newspaper. This was at ASU, so they were all reading the state press. And my uh, mentor, Professor Candelaria, would, wanted me to learn how to theorize. And she would carve out the last 15 minutes for me to get up there and theorize. But since I spent the first portion of class policing the room for newspapers, um, I knew I had to do something different. So I brought in PowerPoint, because at the time that was pretty new. But the thing about the newspapers is eventually you get to the end of them. You could read every word in a newspaper and have it read and put it down. But once I then went from being the teaching assistant to graduating to the front of the class, the students no longer had newspapers in their hand. They had one endless scroll on their phones. And all their heads were down. And I was wondering, how am I going to get their attention? And I was a little disillusioned, so I just happened to grab my can and the koozie. And that sound brought horrified looks. Every head popped up, and they were all horrified. And so I used it as a teaching moment. Well, why are you horrified? Well, because my dad has one just like that for his beer. And then when I reached for my straw to put it in, Everybody sighed, and I said, well, why are you okay now? People don't drink beers with straws. That's a Diet Coke. Well, why do you think it's a Diet Coke? Well, because you're a woman, and you put a straw in it. So it opened up a conversation about the way we see things, right? We are automatically gendered my sparkling water just because of the koozie or the straw. So um, it took... I, I use that as a moment to, to have my students recognize themselves as readers in the world and, the w and recognize how they read things, how who they are informs the way they see the world. Then they went back to scrolling on their phones. So I wondered, well, how can I keep this momentum going? Because the rest of it was hashtag boring. This is the Chinese symbol for well, well field. In the feudal system, this was a land, how, how did it to divide land? The well, right, one of the greatest human needs, would go in the middle and the rest would be, the others would be parsed out. In this very construction is community, right? The hashtag. So how do I use these hashtags in the classroom? I wanted to harness that endless scroll and get them looking critically at the information that they were seeing. On, on their phones and on their computers. Um, so, Bell Hooks calls for radical o openness and conversation. And I realized with literary swag that that hashtag became a conversation and a sharing of ideas. And she also says that learning can, take, can be shared in diverse modes of speech, which hashtags create. One of the, uh, the activities I have my students do is to self-identify. Uh, they have to do hashtag self ID, and some of them say hashtag film nerd, hashtag foodie, hashtag broke college student, hashtag gamer girl. Others bring in their more complicated, complex specificities to it um, because there is real validity about being a hashtag la Latino in America or black on campus. And if we look at the way that our students identify themselves and get to know them better, then we can tailor what we're doing in the classroom. Um, so this requires a radical openness, and there are many prof professors out there doing that. So when Bell Hooks calls for this radical openness in order to be a democratic educator and to um, 
to approach the world in new and exciting ways and take the classroom out of the classroom, I think the hashtag really gives us a way to do that. For example, there are many uh, young up-and-coming professors doing that. My cousin, who's in the audience here, is a, uh, grad, a PhD candidate at U of A in linguistics, and she has students follow a hashtag to their root. But not only does it teach them about linguistics or the root of a particular movement or hashtag, it also cr can create these improbable connections. So I want to thank you all for uh, honoring me <laughs> the, and uh, listening today. I'm very hashtag thankful for your presence and your attention. Yeah.